What's going on everyone? Today we're going to do something a little bit different than I normally do. Normally I'm outside by my car showing things. Uh, it's about 9 degrees in Wisconsin. So I decided that I'm going to be able to do this recording on my computer um, and then also kind of show some of the visualizations. I've gotten a ton of questions on Facebook and uh, YouTube about uh, the Servo Vegas setup, uh, understanding like the high-low converter, how do you hook it up to the BNO system or how do you hook it up to the non-BNO system. I also had a question um, asking, you know, do I have the BNO system? What does it look like? How are the speakers set up? Um, there's a couple of noticeable differences between the two, and uh, I did a little bit of research to be able to figure out the phasing, the positive and negative, um, and I have a couple of uh, other cool uh, pieces of information for everyone. So I uh, definitely wanted to uh, just first and foremost say thank you to everyone. Uh, last year was a great year for um, for the channel. Um, I just ask that everybody continues to subscribe as they see things um, that they like and if they want to see more content, it really gets me uh, to create more content. So thank you to all of the viewers, all the subscribers. Um, it has been uh, tremendous for me and I really do appreciate the support and a lot of the kind words that I've received over the last uh, year. So um, back at it again. Uh, so let's uh, kind of dive into some of the questions and answers. All right, let's jump into uh, some of the uh, questions that we received. The first one is, hey, does your SQ have the BNO sound system by uh, Prosumer Garage? A uh, great question. It is the base model system. It does not have the BNO, so it's a non-BNO system. Um, there are some uh, core differences between the BNO system and the standard system, um, but there's also some sim similarities, which make it uh, very interesting as uh, I was digging into this project. Uh, first, I'll go into the similarities. They both come in the exact same box. So the, the spare tire um, subwoofer enclosure that you get with your Audi, it's exactly the same between the two systems, which makes it difficult to kind of uh, tell between the two. But there is one core difference, which is the sticker that is on the box itself. One says that it's a 40 watt two ohm speaker, which is in the non BNO. And in the BNO system, it has a dual 100 watt eight ohm um, speakers. So it, it shows that on the sticker, but when you actually take the box out and take a look at it, it is a single speaker with dual voice coils, which means that um, you're passing two different uh, signals into the speaker, into two separate voice coils, and those voice coils are able to actuate to be able to create the bass noise. What that means is the BNO system has a little bit more uh, uh, driver strength, a much larger magnet. I'll, I'll show a picture of the magnet's differences. Um, which means that it has the ability to create more bass. Um, but the surface area of the cone itself is still six and a half inches. Both systems are six and a half inches. There's only a single six and a half inch driver in each of the enclosures. So when you take a look at that versus the Cern Vega, the Cern Vega, I think it says it's a 12 inch. It's actually like 11 and some change. Um, but your surface area is almost double in size, which means that you can move more air and it has way more power at 600 watts. So you're moving more air, you have more power to move that air, and you're gonna be able to create a much deeper and a louder bass note just by the surface area and the mechanics of how subwoofers work. The next question that I have is from Jose G. Um, that, is there a difference uh, in the factory plugs between the BNO and non-BNO system? Uh, the answer to that is yes, there is. So on the non-BNO system, it's a two-plug system, which means that the 40-watt speaker only needs a positive and negative to be able to run that speaker. However, the way that the BNO system set it up is a dual voice coil system, which means that uh, if you wire it one way, you could just run two, two lines to it, but BNO didn't do that. They uh, power the uh, voice coil separately from each other. So uh, one of the voice coils uh, is powered by two of the lines, and the other voice coil is uh, powered by the other two lines. So um, the answer is uh, they are different. The plugs are different, which means that when you hook it up to the Serwin Vega system, um, it's going to take a little bit different wiring between the two, which um, I will get into the line converter, explaining what that is and how to connect both systems. I have a pretty detailed diagram on how to be able to tap into the system to get the Serwin Vega system to accept the connection on the high to low converter. So uh, stay tuned to the next questions. So the next question that I have is from David H. Uh, and the question goes, uh, is it possible to remove the center hinge on the trunk spare tire cover to get it to sit more flush? Well, I went down this road as well. Um, I did not get the slimline uh, version of the Cern Vega. I got the standard height. So the slimline is supposed to drop it a couple of inches to get it to sit a little bit more flush. 
Um, I did not get that. So the center hinge on the uh, um, spare tire cover, um, the, the basically the, the floor inside of your trunk sits up just a little bit. It bumps into the um, where the a bolt comes out. Um, it definitely is kind of a nuisance. And you'll see that it, uh, when everything's down, it sits up uh, about an inch um, when everything is supposed to be flat. So what I ended up doing is I went down the process of um, taking a screwdriver to the hinge to see if I could get it to pop off if it was um, really hard to do. Well, good news for everyone is it's glued on. You just have to take your time and you have to pry around the hinge and you have to keep prying around the hinge to break and separate the glue from the wood, um, on the, um, hinge itself. Uh, the bad side is when I was doing the hinge, um, I did take a screwdriver and I flipped it forward. And when I flipped it forward, it did bust the, um, screwdriver through in one small area. Luckily I caught it soon enough that the cover still co covers where it kind of went through um, the wood. But um, I'd recommend taking your time and gently going around and uh, prying it off. Um, start with the screwdriver and kind of pry what you can around the outside, not pushing too far down. Um, put it under and then kind of pry it in a downward fashion. And then I took a hammer and I kind of was chiseling around uh, the uh, outside of it as well, just to be able to separate the glue from the wood. Um, after a little bit of work, I got it off um, and it sat a little bit more flush. Well, the problem is, is that it's still not perfect and it did bug me. So I took some Velcro to try Velcro and put Velcro across the bottom to see if I could get it to Velcro sit uh, on there. Well, um, too much vibration, too much air movement. Um, it will not sit in there nicely. So my final phase of it was to purchase a, um, a, a liner or a, a trunk cover uh, to be able to put in there. Um, I'll have the link here as well, um, which also helps kind of dampen some of that. And you can't tell that it's sitting up or sitting down because the trunk trunk liner itself um, sits at a, at a even height across everything. So it's kind of cheating a little bit because the height is still up just a little bit, maybe, maybe a quarter inch um, above where it should be. Um, but you can't tell because I have that liner in the uh, trunk and it fixes the issue. So uh, just a real quick trick. Uh, yes, you can remove the center hinge. Yes, it does lower it. No, it's not perfect. Um, if you don't take off the hinge, it's going to sit, I think, a little too high for that uh, liner cover as well. And things won't sit in there evenly. So removing the hinge, definitely a good idea. Um, but it's not going to be a perfect fit. Um, I'm still waiting to see if I can get maybe a slimline slim line version of it to see if uh, it will sit like perfectly with the hinge on it as well. Um, I'll see if I can maybe do a part three of this series um, if I do get one. So, uh, Sterwin Vega, if you're listening, I would love to have one to experiment with. Uh, all right, excellent. Let's go on to the next question. So the next question that I have is from Alexander W. Uh, if I wanted the Sterwin Vega spare tire subwoofer STS, uh, is it simply uh, plug and play or would I have to do a new harness? So the answer to that is that you would definitely need to wire in something. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do uh, the wiring. Uh, the first way is that high to low converter, which is taking uh, or tapping into the lines on the uh, subwoofer out. So I, I'll show how to splice it um, in another part of this video. But um, you can splice into those lines and then run those lines up to the high to low converter that's built into the Cerrone Vega. That's option one. Uh, option two is being able to use an external line converter. Um, the upside downside of using an external line converter is some of the line converters do require a 12 volt power, um, which is definitely a downside, right? You're going to have to be able to tap into probably the cigarette lighter in the trunk. Um, and then you also have to ground them as well. So you don't get any engine whine as you're accelerating. You'd hear that right through the subwoofer itself. So um, you can do the external line converter. Uh, another option, if you don't want to tap into the lines themselves, there is a, a gentleman that is making um, the plug, the opposite end of the plug. Um, so the female version of the plug that you can clip into that has uh, two different types of outputs. The first output would be um, straight to RCAs. Um, just like the line converter, um, you'd also have to purchase the RCAs um, to plug into the RCA outputs on either the line converter or that option. And then you plug into the uh, amplifier. The, the problem with the RCAs is that I get a little concerned about the BNO system and having it be a higher um, wattage or amperage that's being pushed through. 
Um, it, it only accepts up to a certain amount of volts on the low line or the, the RCA inputs. And if it only accepts that and you overpower it, you could blow out your RCAs. So I'm a little, little weary on the idea of uh, being able to run those RCAs, but I've heard people have run them before and they haven't had any issues. Um, it just makes me a little nervous to know how I play and how I crank things up. I would hate to blow out my RCAs on the subwoofer. Um, the other option is to directly wire it, again, using that harness that clips on, the female harness that clips onto the factory harness. And it has uh, two or four plugs out, um, two for the non-BNO, four for the BNO system. And so you'd be able to hook up the high to low converter uh, to either those two or the four that's built into the Cern Vega. The last part that I want to talk about is uh, that high to low converter um, that's built into the Cern Vega. If you hook up the wires directly from the harness to the subwoofer, it actually taps into the power that's coming off of the uh, speaker system itself to be able to power on the subwoofer. What that means is you no longer have to run a remote line to the cigarette lighter in the trunk. You only have to connect the wires to the high to low converter and the amplifier will turn on automatically. Um, which I think is a way better setup to just be able to do that. If you use the RCAs or another high to low converter, you also need to tap that subwoofer, the Sirwin Vega, into that uh, 12 volt line in the trunk because the amplifier won't know how to turn on and off based off of the low line inputs. So um, for ease of setup and ease of wiring, um, I would say tap into the lines where they're using the female plug or if you're just tapping directly into the lines using wiretaps and then plug it directly into the high to low converter on the subwoofer, um, it'll automatically power on by sensing using power sensing and it requires less wires and less uh, finagling and less splicing. So just uh, some food for thoughts on how I personally would do it. All right, the next question that I have is, is there a way to tell which line is positive and which one is negative for wiring to the line converter? Um, well, this is an interesting thing. Um, there are ways that you can like look up the manual and be able to find the wiring diagram for the stereo system. It's gonna be really hard to find. Um, I personally have searched probably a couple of hours just to try to find the SQ5 B9 platform for the non-BNO and BNO system. And it really doesn't describe really well of uh, what colors are what. So what I did is I did an experiment. Um, it's an old trick uh, with a nine volt battery that I'm gonna show you right now. So after taking the speaker out, what I ended up doing is taking a um, just normal wire and connecting it to the uh, um, the wire on the inside of the speaker casing. Uh, you'll see that these connect to the pin locations that are on the plug. So I'm gonna be able to determine what's positive and negative. So if I have it set up correctly with the red being positive and the black being negative, when I apply a nine volt battery power to it, um, it's going to push the speaker outward. If it is in reverse polarity, it's going to suck the speaker inward. So nine volt battery, you'll see that there's a plus, which is a circle, and the negative would be that hex pattern. So here we go. I'm going to show you uh, kind of what it looks like when you touch it to a nine volt battery. So you'll see that, that it means that uh, the way I have it hooked up is actually correct by just chance that uh, it pushes it out, which means that that's positive. So if I were to switch them around and be able to do a negative polarity, you'll see that when I touch the, uh, the negative, the speaker will go inward. So now I know that when I take a look at the pin locations on here, um, this side, the right-hand side, is going to be the uh, positive lead and the other side is going to be the negative lead. It's a real quick way to be able to figure out the, the polarity of what your speaker system is doing. It doesn't damage the, the cone. All it's doing is pushing it in and out and these speakers can handle uh, 9 volts uh, to be able to move the speaker in and out. So just wanted to quickly show that. Um, that's how I figured out the uh, polarity. So for the B&O uh, people that have the B&O system in their car, um, I'm not going to leave you uh, high and dry. Uh, I do have a diagram. I actually had to draw it out a little bit to be able to explain a little bit better of how a dual voice coil system works and why it takes four plugs. Um, I actually did the 9-volt battery test to a um, dual voice coil system, and I did the the brown, green, the negative, and the green, red, positive, because I knew those were negative and positive, and the voice coil wasn't moving at all. I was like, well, what the heck is going on here? Well, that's because I, I just wasn't really thinking about the dual voice coils, and that the, the coils are um, connected 
um, in a way that they can work in unison or, or separately. So a uh, way to do a voice coil system um, is, is it has a positive and negative lead on each side of that voice coil uh, for each single voice coil. Now, in this graphic, it kind of shows like they're separated. They're actually intertwined in between each other, so it's actually interlocked. Um, and so when the left channel um, causes or you hear bass note on the left channel, it'll move the speaker a little bit. Um, when you have it on the right channel, channel it'll move it a little bit. But if the bass is blended between both channels, it'll move the most. And you'll get the deepest bass note out of the um, subwoofer in a dual voice coil system. Um, some car manufacturers will just run two lines and run them in series um, where you only need two lines. But in this particular case, uh, they are running four lines, which uh, they can run independently for left-right uh, bias, I'm, I'm assuming. And um, so we have the ability to um, now know what the positive and negative leads are um, based off of how they're connected. Um, you'll see on one side of the speaker, um, you'll see the terminals. Um, they all kind of independently connect into the into different areas in the um, in the subwoofer itself, but if you flip the speaker around and look at the back of it, you'll see that the, the negative terminal um, actually ties to another negative and the positive turtle terminal ties to another positive using a, a metal piece that's uh, uh, bridging the two connections together. So that's how the dual voice coil setup works with the BNO. Um, I was able to verify the positive and negative um, features of this, and this is how it actually kind of looks as a dissection. Um, for the BNO system for what the colors are. So there's your colors, um, brown, green, negative, red, green, positive, green, blue, negative, green, red, positive, with the first one that's designated there as the major color, and the second one as the minor color, which is the stripe going through the line. So uh, hopefully this helps uh, all of you in the uh, wiring of your um, systems and tapping into the lines to be able to do the line converters. All right, the next question that I have is from William M. How do I tap into the lines if I don't want to buy a harness? Um, there's a couple of ways to do this, um, some better than others. Um, I do know some people, for whatever reason, actually cut off the lines, and then they uh, strip back the lines, and they uh, put these little caps, put them on and crimp the caps down to be able to add an additional line to them. I just kind of feel like that um, cutting it, you'll never get a really good connection back on that factory harness again. It would just be like cut it off, save that harness, and then re put it back together when you want to sell the car, right? Um, the other way that I know that some people do it is they will actually uh, take an X-Acto knife or a utility knife and peel back um, some of the um, out, out sheathing or outside sheathing, wrap a wire around it to be able to... Uh, to be able to add or extend wire to it um, and then solder it or just shrink wrap it so it stays on. Some people just tape it. Again, I don't like that. It's not, uh, with vibration in the trunk, it could come off. Um, so the way that I do prefer, which I'm gonna show you in a second here, is to uh, take um, what they call uh, wire splicing kits and be able to splice the wire in. So I'll get to that right now to kind of show the way that I like doing it. Um, the only downside of these is that you sometimes have to stagger them down the line. You can't do them all side by side because it just really creates this like big bulky uh, bundle. So usually I do it a little bit further back for one and then kind of keep moving it forward. Um, so eventually it's it, the, the act, overall thickness of the line is only going to be uh, one of the splices thick. So uh, here we go. Here's how you do it. So I wanted to quickly go over how you can tap into the subwoofer lines. Uh, what you'll see is I'm using um, these uh, this product that's called a quick splice. Uh, essentially, what you have on the quick splice is uh, you have the ability to insert the the cable that you want to run up to the subwoofer into one end, and then one just kind of goes in line with the uh, with the wire itself. So here's an example of let's say a wire that is going to be in line, and then I also grabbed another piece of wire here to show like we're going to run this up to the amplifier for the uh, high to low converter. So on this piece itself, I'm going to hold it up to the camera here. You'll see that one end doesn't actually go through, and then the other end uh, goes all the way through. So you can actually see through uh, one end. The one that's capped off, that's going to be the line that you would send over to the um, subwoofer itself. So you'd stick in the new uh, line into there. And then to tap into the existing subwoofer location, all you do is you take a uh, you take the line and you put it into there. So one is capped off at the end, insert it. The other one goes in line 
and then all you have to do is you uh, press down on the um, the the pin itself. So I'm gonna go like that, presses in, and you'll see that the metal piece goes all the way through the lines. Now, both of them are in there really tight, and the lines are connected. So now this is now connected to um, the um, to the wire, which is pretty cool. So just so you know, there are ways in which you can easily tap into things without having to splice or to be able to pull or uh, use like an X-Acto knife to kind of cut around the cable and to make the connection. These quick splices are pretty awesome. So I highly recommend it. All right, so the very last question in the series is in my Audi, uh, how can I connect uh, the Sur and Vega? Is it easy, is it quick? Um, the quick answer to that is yes, it's super easy. Um, in fact, it's probably one of the easiest subwoofer installations I've ever done in any car, uh, mainly because European cars have the battery in the back, which means that it's a very short run to be able to get to the positive terminal on the battery. Um, additionally, the ground, you can ground right to the chassis in the trunk area. Usually there's a safe spot to be able to do that. Um, the, uh, the only kind of inverse thing is uh, most cars have a cigarette lighter. I found out that my 2018 SQ5 does not have a cigarette lighter in the back. Um, so what that means is I had to find, or I would have to find, a 12-volt switching line somewhere in the trunk to tell the amplifier to turn on and off. Luckily, I use the high to low converter and the value of the high to low converter is I don't have to search for that remote line. It senses whether it's getting a signal or not from the um, positive and negative uh, lines through that high to low converter and it powers on and powers off the amp accordingly. So the first one I'm going to do or first one I'm going to talk about is the non BNO system um, and uh, talk about the actual configuration. So I'll throw it up on the screen here. Um, what I ended up doing in my vehicle, um, I ran a uh, line to the battery. Now, the line to the battery is the, the red line or the, the positive uh, battery terminal. Um, that is a fused system, so make sure you keep the fuse in there. If you don't, uh, you could really start a car fire. So um, definitely, definitely make sure that the circuit is fused. Um, I then grounded the, um, the ground wire to the chassis. I just found a spot in the uh, floor. I scraped it with the screwdriver to get some of the interior, interior paint off of it. And I made a, um, I, I made a, a hole to be able to attach a, a ground to. Um, I'm not using the power line because I'm using the high to low converter. So what I did is I connected the, um, the positive uh, lead on the factory um, um, output from the subwoofer output, which is gonna be the gray and red. And I then did both positives on the right left channel because I'm I don't necessarily have right left channel separation in the non BNO system. So I joined the both the positives together, including um, the positive of the um, uh, coming from the subwoofer. I then joined the negatives together, and I did the negative for the gray slash brown uh, negative lead off of the factory. Um, and that's basically the full connection. No RCAs to run, no remote line to run, no other terminations. The power, the ground, and connecting those lines and your system's up and running. Pretty awesome. There is a, a base controller that does connect uh, by, by what looks like a phone plug. I don't know if anybody knows what this looks like anymore, but uh, it is a connection that uh, does plug in that you can uh, adjust the sound. It's not necessarily, you don't have to have it plugged in. You don't even need to run it to the front of the vehicle. I don't, I keep it back. So the next slide I'm gonna show you is the BNO system and connecting the BNO system. One of the biggest things that I am gonna hammer on is for that uh, battery power, the red line that you're connecting, make sure, make sure it's fused. I've seen car fires before from it. It is very dangerous if you don't fuse it. It is fused from the factory. So make sure you keep that fuse in line to be able to power uh, the Servan Vega subwoofer. Uh, the next thing that uh, I did is um, I, I would connect the ground wire to the same location as I did in the previous slide. One thing I didn't mention before was that I'm connecting to um, somewhat of a hollow tube, so I'm not going to be piercing into any sort of uh, chassis um, or gas tank or any component. It's a hollow tube that I'm uh, going into to ground uh, the subwoofer. It's a very safe place for it to go. I'm not using the remote line because I'm using the high to low converter. And what you'll see here is that I'm connecting, uh, per the diagram, the positive and negatives for the left and right channels. Uh, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty. Um, the screen's going to be up for a little bit, and you can always pause the video and look at it and come back to it. But um, you basically connect the left and right channels based off of what's described here. 
um, and you would be able to get it connected. So again, super simple install. The line converter, so tapping into those lines, uh, a ground wire and a positive wire, and you're on your way. Um, you can also use the baseline as well. Um, again, I don't run mine up to the front of the vehicle. I keep it in the back of the vehicle because I tune it once and that's it. So there you have it. Super easy install. I'm always interested in hearing your opinion, so drop a comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more tangents on cars, motorcycles, and trucks. Thanks again for watching.